get you back to programming. But as you can see there, it has weakened at least the wind somewhat down to 80 miles per hour, but really not a whole lot of change with Sally at this hour. Uh, it is still just sitting down here about 55 to 60 miles off the mouth of the Mississippi River, and it really is not moving northwest still at two miles per hour, just kind of wobbling around and the pressure is down another millibar. So it's it's really not strengthening, but it's not weakening significantly either. That'll be the trend up until landfall. Notice down in this area throughout the rest of today, tomorrow morning, getting close landfall still in either extreme southeastern South Mississippi or going towards Mobile or even over towards Pensacola, kind of in that zone that could see landfall by tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon as a category one storm. You can see there uh, as it continues to lift off towards the north and eventually the northeast as we go throughout Wednesday by Thursday here and then by Friday it will be getting into portions of Georgia. So still going to be tracking this thing very closely. Surge values still remaining the same as of this hour. They did come down uh, with the 10 a.m. advisory four to six feet uh, for eastern St. Bernard and lower Plaquemines Parish. Those are the highest numbers three to five feet for coastal Mississippi. Certainly some good news for coastal Mississippi with more of a north wind there two to four feet there in the lake and that's mainly on the south shore and we saw I brought you pictures earlier of the lakefront flooding there. Of course, very typical anytime there's a strong wind in one to three feet for Port Fouchon to Grand Isle. Higher surge values as you head off towards Mobile and Mobile Bay. So greatest impacts with Sally are going to be outside of southeast Louisiana and even for South Mississippi, things are looking better. Could still see some heavy rainfall from Biloxi, but more so in Jackson County. And then your high risk for flooding, flash flooding is going to be from Mobile going into the Pensacola area over towards Destin. So they'll be dealing with the torrential rainfall. Now tropical storm warnings continue outside of the metro. They have been canceled for New Orleans in the North Shore. They do continue for lower Plaquemines and eastern St. Bernard, along with Hancock County. So that's where your breeziest conditions are going to be. Maybe wind gusts up to 50 possible hurricane warnings as you go into Harrison County. So that is the latest as of 1 p.m. If you would like to continue uh, to hear more detailed forecasts, you can join us over on Facebook Live immediately following this. Uh, but for now, we're going to send you back to regular programming. From Channel 4's Eyewitness News, this has been your local weather expert alert, brought to you by Egan Insurance Agency. All right, and we're continuing this over on Facebook. We just did an update on Channel 4. We're getting the 1 p.m. advisory in on Hurricane Sally. And here on Facebook, we can do a little bit more in-depth analysis, go to in a little bit more into detail on what we've got going on. And notice Sally at 1 p.m. If you're just now joining us, it is down to 80 miles per hour, uh, but still going to be a very uh, significant storm with regards to water for portions of Alabama, the Florida Panhandle. Our impacts in southeast Louisiana still look to be extremely minimal. Notice we're not even seeing really any rainfall here. We've got some clouds moving in just those um, that outflow from Sally moving over us, but the rainfall stops right along the coast. Some light showers on the mouth of the river, and then as you head towards Mobile uh, in kind of Jackson County, you've got some heavier rain, but there is Laura or Laura Sally uh, barely moving northwest at two miles per hour, just kind of sitting there wobbling around. Pressure is holding steady right around 982 to 983 over the past uh, five to six hours, so not strengthening really, but it's really not weakening either. Here's a closer look and this is looped over the past. How long did I loop this over the past five hours and it just sits there in the same spot, right? There's a little movement to it, but not much and notice it's not really getting closer to us. So for those asking, no, it's not going to just come shooting towards the west. Notice though we are starting to get some of those showers right along the river. There's some heavier bands in here, uh, some light showers down in far eastern St. Bernard Parish, not really impacting anyone. And then over there in coastal Mississippi, you're getting some showers as well, but very, very light. We had Danny over here in Biloxi earlier, and he said there was some light showers, nothing more. Some heavier rain as you get into Jackson County and especially up to Mobile, Dauphin Island here, of course, Gulf Shores and then Pensacola, you're getting in on the heavier rain. This is going to continue for the rest of the day over there and going into tonight. So that's why the flooding potential highest over here. And as you can see, we are high and dry, which means our flooding potential extremely low and really not even expecting any flooding here in our area. So this was the 10 a.m. track. Of course, we don't get a track update with the 1 p.m., but you can see they're continuing to lift basically to the north, and it's probably not going to take the straight line, but it's going to wobble around in here and then make landfall wherever it's wobbling at that point essentially is how these landfalls with slow systems work. So from Jackson County, Mississippi, all the way to Pensacola, 
that, that's the cone of air. It could certainly happen. The center of it, of course, is more of Mobile, kind of near Dolphin Island uh, as a Category 1 storm. Not really anticipating any significant strengthening at this point, but it could maintain that strength. Uh, and then by Wednesday here, so landfall would be sometime Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon. But conditions starting tonight are only going to go downhill as we go throughout the rest of the day over there. Of course, the cone well outside of southeast Louisiana. So that is the trend with the track has been east and it's going to continue to trend east. It looks like Thursday morning here and then by Friday all the way into Georgia. So it will eventually start to speed up once it fills an upper level trough trying to swing down your rain totals. These are big updates from two days ago, right? Uh, a couple days ago, all this was over here. Now it's all over here because the track right here. Uh, that's where your heaviest rain is going to be 15 to 20 inches. Certainly possible. National Hurricane Center even saying some places over here could pick up 30 plus as inches of rain um, and that is just that causes catastrophic flooding right now back here at home one to two inches. That's probably being generous uh, with those totals. We could see maybe a band of rain or two on that western side and they drop pretty, uh, pretty heavy rainfall pretty fast, but overall one to two inches here. You might not even see a drop of rain as you get towards Baton Rouge and if you do up towards Hammond, maybe a tenth of an inch. So that's what we're thinking as you get into coastal Mississippi. You're talking Pearl River County and or so say South Mississippi, Pearl River and Hancock counties. We'll say two to four inches. That might be on the high side now with a little bit trend to the east. Harrison County, you're kind of on that dividing line in Harrison County. So for Gulfport, Biloxi, uh, you know, in Long Beach, you might pick up a quarter of an inch of rainfall in Biloxi. You might pick up even more. So uh, there's going to be a tight gradient somewhere in here. It just depends on where that storm goes once it gets up in here. So still watching the flooding potential pretty closely for Harrison County, but the trends have been pretty good for you. Now down along the river and into uh, the Bayou parishes, really not expecting much rain either. Your best shot seeing rain in uh, Louisiana is going to be down here in eastern St. Bernard and lower Plaquemines. Uh, and of course, you're already dealing with the flooding from the storm surge. So there's your flooding risk. It is highest over here in this pink color. That's where flash flooding potential is very high through the rest of today going into tonight. Notice we don't even have southeast Louisiana really included in this except for down here, uh, kind of right on the mouth of the river and no one even lives. Uh, there's this down here in the Biloxi marshes, so uh, not really concerned with the flooding potential here as uh, Sally lifts towards the north and east. Your storm surge. This really hasn't changed. They've gone down, but we're still seeing the rising water because Sally's just sitting down here and it is she is or it is pumping water towards the east and kind of the northeast as you get a little bit further away. So two to four feet in the lake, uh, but more so on the south shore because you've got that northeasterly wind and that helps push the water down. Now, of course, the entire lake rises when surge comes up, but uh, you'll definitely notice it right there on Lakeshore Drive. Uh, of course, it's closed down because it is flooded and then into Lake Bourne here you get the funneling effect. You get water rising like Klowski Shell Beach. You're definitely seeing the water over the roadways and then down in eastern uh, the east bank of Plaquemines Parish four to six feet there. Three to five feet on the Mississippi Coast. These have gone down and you might think, well, why is the Mississippi Coast lower than here, even though it's closer to the storm? Well, it all has to do with the winds, right? So your winds are actually pushing this water here. Whereas if a northeasterly wind is on the coast, it's pushing the water. It's helping to push the water uh, out to the Mississippi Sound. So your surge levels uh, are not going to be as big of an issue in Biloxi uh, or I should say in South Mississippi if you're on the beach. Now remember there's bays and things like that. So going up into the Biloxi back bay, you're going to get water rise in places like that. If you're on uh, the Biloxi side, the Iberville side, probably not so much. Bay St. Louis, you're talking to St. Louis Bay, you're seeing some water rise, especially shoreline area and things like that and down towards Waveland on Beach Boulevard. So surge issues have certainly gone down, but the water is that's probably going to be our biggest impact from this other than some gusty winds. Here are your tides for a, a few locations. Grand Isle, your tide was up 10 a.m. So things should start to improve there. Tide was up a little bit, a couple feet, but that's about it. Going into Lake Pontchartrain and really near I-10 uh, and kind of over towards uh, the Lake Catherine area, places like that and the entrance to Lake Bourne uh, about 3 p.m. is your high tide. So within the next couple of hours on the western side of Lake Pontchartrain, getting to Lake Maurepas, you're talking maybe 6, 7, 8 p.m. is your high tide. Shell Beach, uh, 2 p.m. is your high tide. So down in Lower St. Bernard and going into, I uh, should say, Lower and Eastern St. Bernard and Eastern Bank of Plaquemines Parish, looking at about 2 p.m. for your high tide. And then uh, that's where our highest surge is going to be as well. Winds are pretty breezy. If you go outside, you're going to notice a nice northeast wind. It actually kind of feels kind of nice uh, gusting to 29 at the airport, gusting to 33 at the lakefront. We were gusting a little higher earlier and uh, our winds have calmed down just a little bit or they're kind of maintaining, I guess 25 there in Slidell's your gust 31 in Gulfport uh, and even 
28 down in Galeano. Homa, you've got a sustained wind of 13, so just a little pleasant breeze, nothing uh, breeze, nothing too uh, big of a deal there. So here's what Precision Cast is showing. Notice here's your rain bands. A few showers it shows, but we're really not seeing these. Uh, and these are kind of look a little bit more dramatic than they actually are. It'd be more like a sprinkle. As we go throughout the afternoon, the worst part of the storm still offshore. Uh, notice our winds though, still pretty breezy out of the northeast and out of the north, a little bit closer to the system. Excuse me, 48 mile per hour wind gust there in Boothville along the mouth of the river as we go throughout the afternoon. So our strongest winds, tropical storm force conditions will be down here. Even into Gulfport, you notice you're gusting to over 40, gusting to over 50 in Pascagoula and Jackson County. And then as the storm starts to make that northerly and kind of easterly, northeasterly track, of course, it's going to lift away. Our rain chances will go down significantly, even though they're not very high right now, and that will move up towards Mobile. And as we go into tonight, conditions go downhill very quickly for these areas as uh, Sally moves on shore. Notice this model even takes it a little bit closer towards the Florida Alabama state line. It's a possibility. It's just one of these things that um, we're just gonna have to watch as it makes landfall because it's moving so slow. Notice a few tail end moisture, uh, maybe bands trying to work through the coastal areas, but overall, don't expect to see much rain from this here in southeast Louisiana. Winds will remain breezy throughout um, Wednesday as we see it lift away. We could see some gust over 30, kind of similar to what we're seeing today. There'll be more out of the north and northwest. And then by Thursday, things are much, much calmer. Give you an idea of what the winds are doing in our marine locations right there in Shell Beach. You're gusting to 40, so it's quite breezy. Gusting to 30 there at the lakefront. Bay St. Louis, you're gusting to 35. Grand Isle, you've got some gust out of the north at 26. The mouth of the river has been the... Um, Spot with the highest gust, and of course that's been because you're closer to the center of the storm. So gusting to over 50 and uh, about 10 to we'll say 30 miles east of the mouth of the river. We've had some platforms or some buoys reporting gusts over 80 at times. So the worst of the winds look like you're just offshore and that's where they're likely we're going to remain. Surge has been remaining within uh, kind of the forecast area. The highest has been Shell Beach getting up to around five feet of surge there. You can see your uh, map color there. Your highest wind right there on the mouth of the river. There's that 53 gust I was talking about even gusting to 36 on Southwest Pass, but your winds much higher and sustained at tropical storm force as you get towards Dauphin Island. Uh, and going towards uh, Petty Boy Island there south of Pascagoula. Coastal Mississippi in Bay St. Louis, you're gusting to 35 at the Yacht Club, 31 at Keesler, 33 at Pascagoula, so a bit of a breeze. Those will likely go up in South Mississippi later today. But remember, you've got that north wind right now, so that's helping with your surge situation on the coast of Mississippi. Not really helping with your surge situation there in portions of uh, Lake Bourne, Shell Beach, Wyclowski, uh, and places like that. And then you, even on the east bank of Plaquemines Parish, you're going to have that northeasterly wind continue. There's the hurricane force winds lifting to the north, staying out of southeast Louisiana. Just the tropical storm force winds kind of skirting the coastal areas. This heads to the north, makes landfall late tonight through early Wednesday. A very prolonged period. Unfortunately, this is not going to be one of those events where the winds pick up and they come down dramatically. They will slowly pick up over here and then they will slowly come down. So kind of uh, exacerbates the potential for power outages. The ground's going to be extremely wet over there. Not a good situation uh, for sure, even though Category one storm, you say, well, can't be a big deal, but it can if it is a slow mover. So that's what they'll be dealing with. Now, a lot of people have been asking about the steering currents and saying, well, I want to know what the steering currents are doing and I'll show you. Uh, so the reason this isn't moving is because it is sitting right here is a storm. It is sitting under a ridge. There's a ridge that's developed in front of it and over it, and that basically means there's light winds. There's not a whole lot for this thing to steer or anything to steer it. So it's just kind of sitting out here meandering. Now what's going to happen, this big ridge in the orange is going to start to weaken as a trough starts to build down. You can see the colors disappear there. There's your trough in the blue, and what a trough is, is it, it, there's a jet stream. Imagine the jet stream digs down, and your winds swing around the trough like this. So your winds start down, they go south, and they curve around the end, they come up. This trough is going to start to impart that southwest wind eventually on Sally. And when that happens, Sally's just waiting for something to push it. It's just sitting out there, but it's waiting for something to act on it. And that's what's going to act on it and push it on out of the area. So that's why it's not going to come racing towards the west. Uh, and we don't expect any big shifts in the track at this point. If anything, it would shift more east because the slower it is, it's going to sit there and wait and wait and wait. And then once those that trough swings through and hits it, it will pull it on out to the north and east. So Wind it with your seven day forecast here. Uh, it's been great trends for Southeast Louisiana. Um, I know, you know, we have viewers in South Mississippi as well, going all the way over towards Biloxi. Um, trends have been good for you too. 
but you still need to watch this very closely because you're going to be on that dividing line of some pretty heavy rainfall and then Jackson County going into Baldwin Mobile County could see significant impacts. Uh, so we'll see some showers today, but most people are going to stay dry to be honest here in southeast Louisiana. A uh, bit breezy that'll continue into Wednesday. Look at our forecast Thursday. Not bad. We'll have some upper 80s. Uh, not too bad humidity wise and maybe get a little cool front in here as we go into uh, the weekend. Look at this highs in the mid to lower 80s waking up. We'll have that nice kind of dry air feeling like the upper uh, 60s or it'll be in the upper 60s on the North Shore, South Shore, the lower 70s. So that's going to do it for our 1 p.m. update on Hurricane Sally. Of course, we'll get our 4 p.m. update. We'll bring you those updates uh, here on Facebook as well. But for now, uh, thanks for joining me.